On this week's episode of The Best of the West, we're in pursuit of desert bighorn sheep in the rugged mountains of the Sonora Desert with the team from El Chaparral. This mountainous region of Mexico hosts high numbers of bighorns and mule deer thanks to the restoration efforts made by Abraham Garcia and the team at El Chaparral. Native genetics combined with skilled management programs have made this region of Mexico an epicenter for trophy quality. El Chaparral encompasses 60,000 acres of uh, free-range land and it has 6,000 acres of high fence for mule deer. And in the free range, we find our desert bighorn, desert mule deer, and coos deer. El Chaparral Mountain Range is a great uh, conservation effort for uh, desert bighorns. Our range uh, has always had a bighorn sheep, but the numbers here had always been low. So, in the early 2000s, my partners uh, invested in bringing sheep from Tiburon Island and uh, reintroduced more animals, lots of investments of water system, water distribution to help the sheep here in the range. And through that investment, we see how hunting is great conservation. We see how populations have thrived and they've been built up they've done great. So being born and raised in uh, Wyoming, I've had the opportunity to tag along on a couple Rocky Mountain Bighorn sheep hunts. It was a lot of fun. Um, a couple of my friends had tags and they asked me if I'd come help them spot sheep and, and pack out. And Once I kind of got up there on the mountain and got into sheep country and did the spotting and seeing them through the spotting scope and seeing them be successful, I kind of got the the sheep bug and, and when I got home I realized that I need to find a way to go sheep hunting for myself and I reached out to a couple outfitters in Alaska and decided that I wanted to go on a doll sheep hunt and so I got to experience Alaska for the first time in the Talkeetna range um, and it was about everything everyone's ever told you about sheep hunting. The weather, it got rained on a couple times a day, lots of fog, but it was uh, very beautiful. We saw quite a few sheep we were unsuccessful in harvesting a sheep, and so I went back another year, and the sheep numbers were way down as far as mature legal rams. And so to kind of come home twice empty-handed on a sheep hunt is it's kind of heartbreaking. So I, I got in contact with Abraham, and some of my friends have hunted with Abraham here at El Chaparral, and have told me a lot of really good things about the place, told me what I should expect, He's a great guy, it turned into a very good relationship. He's actually got the best West rifles here. You know when you show up to El Chaparral, you've got a, a high quality gun here that you can use. Aside from in-house custom rifles, El Chaparral provides incredible accommodations to enjoy throughout your stay. Fully staffed with chefs, hunting guides, bartenders, and even a masseuse, you've never been to a hunting camp like this. So as you go into our lodge here at El Chaparral, you're gonna see a lot of mounts. When our hunters come in, they go, wow, did y'all shoot all of these bucks? And to their surprise, I tell them, well, they're all sheds. We do pick up some great sheds for mule deer and, and we take advantage and, and use those to mount and we use them for, for uh, decorating our, our lodge here. We're very privileged that this western coast of uh, Sonora is uh, the home to, to a great population of desert bighorns. As you can see, the desert here is harsh desert, uh, beautiful with the cactus and the big saguaros and the pitayas and uh, just great habitat for, for desert bighorns. We do control predators. Those little things have amounted to the population of bighorns thriving out here. They say that to get a big ram, you've got to hunt it with your binoculars and your spotting scope. And that's exactly what we do. We've got good road system on the base of our mountain range. Uh, you can expect to, to work that, that base and be glassing. And when you find the right ram, uh, our guides usually wait for the right position. And if it's the one that uh, you like and it's a mature 
great ram, then the hunt is on. Uh, usually it's a spot in stock and we try to get you within two, three hundred yards. Sometimes the shots on, on desert bighorns are a little bit uh, further out, but it's just a great hunt. When the best of the West returns, the hunt is on with the team from El Chaparral. Keep it right here on your long range hunting authority. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Zeiss spotting scopes and range finding binoculars. Huntin' Fool. The Best of the West shooting systems. Defiance Custom Actions. The Wild Sheep Foundation. Huskama Optics Canada and LongRangeStore.com. In the pursuit of desert bighorn sheep, there are lots of ups and downs, both literally and figuratively. For those fortunate enough to walk in those boots, the path may be tiresome at times, but ultimately well worth the effort. The Best of the West has been honored to be a part of several desert bighorn sheep hunts over the years. In 2013, we followed Hawaiian native James Klask on his first ever sheep hunt. James scoured the high Nevada desert for the first few days of his hunt and finally got the break he'd been hoping for on day five. In the middle of a rainstorm, James squeezed off a strike on his first ram. You take pictures, you the double, the double Hawaiian shaka. Three years ago, Pat Romero successfully drew his Arizona desert bighorn sheep tag after more than two decades of applying. Surrounded by friends and family, Pat made a cross canyon shot to end his 27 year wait and finally put hands on his first desert bighorn. Few species in North America are as respected and sought after as desert bighorn. The Best of the West is honored to join the Wild Sheep Foundation in their mission to put and keep sheep on the mountain. So we had a really good game plan for uh, kind of the evening of day one. Beto knew there was a couple good rams in this canyon um, because he scouted this canyon before we showed up. As the day got cooler and the sun started to set, the whole canyon kind of came alive. Uh, sheep kind of started popping out from everywhere. Unfortunately, we just kind of ran out of daylight. All successful management plans include culling efforts to maintain populations and promote quality genetics. Abraham uses this opportunity to involve his son in the search of cull bucks throughout the surrounding area. So Abraham the Force, 10 years old. I always work the, the word patience. I tell him, hey, be patient, you know, because in the blind, you've got to be patient. And he says, I hate patience, but when it comes to hunting, he really has to strap down and he knows it's a waiting game. So on this trip, he, he was able to come out with me to El Chaparral. Since it's very flat country, we hunt over feed stations and water. We had seen this old buck out there. He's probably eight or nine years old. And I figured he was gonna be in the 170 class. So great buck to harvest and uh, an opportunity for him to come out. Uh, and he loves that 6.5 PRC. He's been shooting it all year long. He's been uh, very accurate. He's taken numerous hogs and javelinas and he was just pumped about the opportunity to hunt for a desert mule deer buck. We had put in already five or six hunts and this old buck that we had named Oldie, no show. And I could tell he was getting antsy. And so weather was perfect. It was calm and young bucks came in, then a little bit older bucks. And we were 20 minutes from sunset and here comes Oldie. And as soon as we saw him, we knew it was him. And uh, he just gave him a, a perfect shot. As a hunter, I believe we hunt because we love 
nature, we love animals, and the excitement of the hunt, that adrenaline rush of making a great shot, a good ethical shot, and achieving the trophy. But when your son's hunting, now I've experienced a different ball game. I think the excitement is double. And watching my son uh, and with cameras for the show, I was nervous. And, you know, I, I would repeat a couple of times, make sure you put it right on him and squeeze that trigger. Sure enough, he did. That deer just dropped. I was shaking, no doubt. Then walking up to that buck, him getting bigger with my son, that's, that's a blessing. What do you think about your buck? Well, it's huge and one shot, one kill. And it just fell right away. One shot, one kill like your grandpa says? Yeah. There you go. Congratulations, Bano. I Thanks. love you. Thanks, Happy. Our lodge here at El Chaparral sits in the mountains. It's in a beautiful setting. The sunsets are fantastic. Beautiful views. Our hunters, they truly enjoy it. We're always trying to improve our service and the quality of our staff. Great food, great service. Those have been the, the things that our clients have told us. Uh, they've been very, very pleased. So here at the lodge, we have several of the best of the West rifles, uh, chambered in 28 Nosler, 6.5 PRC. I mean, they are fantastic rifles. So we offer this to our clients. That way, if they don't want to travel with rifles, we've got great rifles. I would say around 40% of our clients opt for that option. And then they end up shooting the rifles and they fall in love with them because they are fantastic. So right off the bat, I could tell uh, Beto was a very good sheep guide. He knew this area very well. He knew these sheep very well. He knew which ones needed to be harvested and which ones didn't. I'd kind of look at Beto and kind of see what his uh, reaction was. It was kind of hard to really gauge, like, is this ram one that we should let grow or should I go and grab my gun and get ready? I knew with complete confidence that Beto was going to put me on a good ram. And so it was just a patience game, me waiting to hear from Beto, let's get ready to see if we can take a shot at this ram. So here in Sonora, there isn't really any age requirements, but part of El Chaparral's management program that they've got here is um, they want to harvest the biggest sheep they can and the oldest sheep that they can. We spent a lot of hours passing up rams because they just weren't done growing. It was just kind of a matter of time, matter of playing the sheep game. You gotta, you gotta glass a lot of sheep and you gotta say no to some and you gotta take a harder look at a, a lot of the other ones. When someone would spot a sheep, it would, it would take a while for everybody else to kind of find it. You kind of almost have to catch them moving around because if they're sitting still, they're, they're about impossible to find. As any desert, your water's pretty scarce. And so we kind of can use that to our hunting advantage. We kind of drove around, um, got to some glassing points where we knew the water was close and we figured that's kind of when the, the sheep are going to be watering or, or just got done watering and, and, and they're moving and heading back up. Moved to another glassing point and, and saw some more sheep, a lot of ewes. Fortunately, there was a couple rams there. See him? Yep. So from the moment I got here, I was waiting for the two words from Beto and that was, uh, get ready. It seemed like as soon as he told me that, I was already on the ground with my gun ready to go. He moved up a little higher and got behind kind of some thick brush and I couldn't see him very well. I knew it wasn't a good shot and I didn't want to take that shot. And so at that point it was a waiting game. I always kind of have a little checklist that I go through if, if I've got time. I always want to reconfirm yardage. Um, so I was pulling out my binoculars, confirming the distance. And another thing I, I really like to do is I like to check my turret and make sure I'm not a revolution off. After I kind of went through that checklist, I, I was ready. I just sat behind that scope, what felt like hours. It seemed like every five minutes that went by, it felt like another hour. Kind of at that hour mark, we were glassing it and seeing that the, the female 
in front of him was starting to move. And we figured if, if she was moving, that he was gonna move with her. Sure enough, as she moved to the right, he slowly kind of followed her. Still didn't give us a good shot until um, a couple minutes later, he kind of popped out in the opening. I kind of had to readjust. There was kind of a bush in front of me that I couldn't see the ram very well, and so I kind of had to slide my pack and my rest and my gun to the left a little bit more so I could angle it to the right and, and get a better look at him. We reconfirmed uh, the yardage, made sure both of our cameras were on him, and, and once my camera guy said he was on him and, and Beto said he was on him, that's when I touched it off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Zeiss spotting scopes and range finding binoculars. Hunt and Fool. The Best of the West shooting systems. Defiance custom actions. The Wild Sheep Foundation. Huskama Optics Canada and LongRangeStore.com. For information about hunting at El Chaparral, please call 956-334-9085 or email at abrahamgarciaiii at hotmail.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. Here it was 90 degrees, it was hot. I was laying there waiting for this ram to present a shot. I was getting a little worried actually uh, because we, our batteries on our cameras were starting to kind of fade a little bit and I was worried that, heck, this ram might not move for another three hours and, and we're not gonna have any battery to film the shot. But sure enough, we, we waited it out and it turned out to be about an hour where I sat there in, in prone position and he kind of moved to the right in this little opening and confirmed the range on my turret and uh, made a good shot on him. So he's just to the yeah, he's moving. Okay, you want? Whenever you're ready, Jared. Oh, yeah. 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 He's beautiful, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So about. <laughs> so walking up to it, obviously I didn't want to outrun everybody and, and just, I kind of wanted to share the moment with everybody. And so I, we kind of slowly walked up to it, even though I wanted to sprint to it. It was awesome. We got up to it and it, it seemed it was way heavier than I thought. You know, uh, in the scope, I was trying not to really look at its uh, horns very much because it ends up uh, kind of psyching me out and I didn't want to screw myself up on the shot thinking about the horns. Once it was down and we walked up to it and I got to finally put my hands on, on a sheep's head that was mine, that I could call mine, I was thrilled. The hands were shaking a little bit. I, I couldn't find the words to say. I couldn't have been happier. spotted this ram and we uh, got up on it and uh, we had to wait about 45 minutes ish waited for it to come out of some cactus and some brush and it presented itself at 365 yards and was able to make a good shot on it and got her down there's picture of my ram my hunter <laughs> Bethos is a, a very good guide but he's a very good photographer as well he knew how to set up that ram to, to get the highest quality pictures, to make sure that our pictures do the ram the most justice that you can do. Being kicked out of the less than one club, it's just kind of a surreal feeling. I'm already 
wanting to go on another sheep hunt. I'd like to take a little bit of time to thank Abraham Garcia here. He's the owner and operator of El Chaparral. You know, his hospitality here, it was phenomenal. I couldn't have had a better hunt. Couldn't have been surrounded by better guides, um, a better crew here at El Chaparral. It's fun sharing these moments with uh, the people you enjoy being around with. I already want to come back to El Chaparral just because, just to be around these guys again, it was great. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Best of the West. Be sure to join us next time for more long range hunting adventures.